Let's take a look at creating an interactive front panel using an event structure and a while loop combination. For illustration purposes, I have a simple calculation where I'm displaying the product of the values A and B. To be able to see the product updating on the dial indicator, you have to push the run button. And pretty quickly you notice that you can move these sliders around and the dial does not update until you punch that run button. This VI is not interactive at all right now. Perhaps the first idea that comes to mind is the while loop. This says keep evaluating that, that uh, calculation repeatedly until the stop button is pressed. Let me create a control for the stop button and uh, I normally immediately change the name to escape in brackets. Let me move the control underneath out of the way a little bit. And then right click on the control and select properties. You'll find the tab called key navigation at the far right. And then under toggle, select escape. This means that I can hit the escape key and operate that stop button. Let me first show you how you can do what's referred to as a polling technique. This is not the same thing as the event structure, but it's uh, perhaps a more simple-minded way of doing this. It's not really recommended technique. Basic idea is we use this timer to slow down the operation of the loop. In this case, it's evaluating once every 100 milliseconds. Now we see that the VI is certainly responsive to changes on the controls A and B. And the reason for that is that it's perpetually running and evaluating that calculation every 100 milliseconds, or that would be 10 times a second. We see it's pretty responsive. Let me try the escape key and see if that works. Sure enough, it does. To give you a sense of how fast this loop is operating, I'm going to create a numeric control for the loop index. So notice this is continually incrementing even though we're not doing anything with the controls. That means you're always using up just a little bit of CPU resources even when you're not doing anything with the front panel controls. Now, especially if, if you're not satisfied with how responsive the front panel is, we might try speeding that up. So now it's evaluating it at a thousand times per second. But again, we are really starting to consume some CPU resources now. You might try slowing that down, maybe evaluating twice a second. But now we see that the dial is not very responsive, or it always has some lag associated with it. This polling technique is really not the best way of doing things. So let me take out the timer. I'll take out the numerical control. And instead, I'm going to put my calculation inside an event structure. This is under the programming structures subpalette, and it's located right here. I will wrap the calculation part of the VI inside this event structure. Now let's see what we have here. If you right click on the structure and edit events handled by this structure, we'll see that here's a control of interest, that's control A, and then I can add an event associated with control B. Notice that the default is that the, the event of interest is a change in value on that control. Notice that there's a whole range of events that you could use. You can have things associated with the mouse and the keyboard, all sorts of possibilities. I'll just be satisfied with the default value of value change. Well, let's see what that does for us. All right, now we see that the VI is running continuously as before. We also see the dial display is very responsive to the change in A. What's happening here is that the structure doing the calculation only evaluates in response to a value change on either control A or control B. And that gives us a nice degree of interactivity without bogging down the CPU. Well, this is interesting. Uh, the VI is still running 
and the stop button doesn't seem to be doing anything. Well, if you look over here, you see the stop button is not actually part of the event structure, so we need to do something about that. Let me break out of the VI operation here, right click, and then say add event case. I want this sub panel to be sensitive to a value change on the stop button. So I need to put that inside the sub panel and then wire that to its original destination inside the while loop. Now you see that we have two sub panels. Here's the original. And here's a new one that I just added to handle an event change or a, a value change on the stop button. Let's try running it now. Okay, that all looks good. And let's try hitting escape and it stops immediately. All right, we're in good shape there. To explore this in just a little more detail, to make sure the concept is clear, let me put uh, that numeric control indicator on the loop index one more time. Notice that the loop index only updates in response to a change. What this means is, is the while loop suspends as long as the event structure is not seeing any value changes. One last idea I'd like to share with you before we finish is this idea of the timeout for the event structure. I'm going to make a quick modification to the calculation and do one that's based on feedback. Let me change this to plus. And then rename the dial indicator as A plus the previous value of A. And I'll need to place a feedback node right here. That will take the calculated value of that sum and then feed that back around for use in the next iteration of the while loop. Essentially the calculation is accumulating values of A. That is, it takes the current value and adds it to the previously calculated value. Now here I'm finding the timeout event. This means you can specify some action in case no changes are occurring on the front panel controls. The default here of negative one means don't do anything special. This means after 250 milliseconds of inactivity, then go ahead and trigger the structure one time. Now we can see this in operation right here by looking at the loop index counter. So we see it counting away. We also see that it updates very quickly in response to the control change here. And that wraps it up for the event structure.